Thursday, July 25th, 2024. It is 7.03 p.m. Um, start by introducing ourselves. We have one member online. Susan, introduce yourself. Hi, Susan Cahalan, uh, Vice Chair. Bob Sweet. Peter Coffin. Leah Whiting. Tim McCarty. I command the lift. I'm Carl Hummel, if I didn't say that already. <laughs> um, we're going to be, by special request, we'll be getting a status update for 110, sorry, for 10 Old Taft Avenue, because that's just a kind of quick in and out. Then we will do the public hearings for the notices of intent. Request will immediately go into uh, the issue that added, Attorney Brodsky is here for. So come on up. Mic on sure. There we go. Uh, Amanda Cavalieri with Gary and Hallman, and with me is Gregory Lambert, the property owner for 10 Old Taft. We just wanted to give the uh, commission an update as far as where we're at since the last time we were here. Um, we've been doing uh, some survey work. We got the wetlands reflagged out there um, and picked up some additional information that we need for the plans based on conversations and discussions with Isabella. Um, we anticipate having that plan compiled within the next week, week and a half, uh, to be able to evaluate where the wall is in relationship to uh, the water elevations and the abutting properties, uh, to be able to address some of the concerns of the commission uh, since the last time we were here uh, about a year ago. So, uh, but things are moving forward and um, we anticipate giving you an update, like I had said at the the last time I was here is that we'll give you an update before every hearing to show you that things are moving forward and we anticipate within, I would say, a month that we should have something before you. Yep. Um, Any questions? Okay, thanks for coming in. You're welcome. So Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Before we get to the public hearings, we are trying to introduce a new section agenda called Good and Welfare for the Public. Since we have members of the public here, this is an opportunity for people to give a brief if they have issue of concern or something that they wish to bring to the Conservation Commission's attention. We would not make any decisions based on your input, but we would take it under advisement and think about whether we wanted to have it further investigated. So, are you here for any particular concerns or just to listen into the rest of the meeting? Okay. Well, do you have concerns or something you want to talk to us about? Is this uh, talk about the water? If no, we'll we'll be we'll, we'll have a, a spec after we get that proposal. We'll have an opportunity for members of the audience to talk about that. Okay. This is if you have anything else that isn't currently on the agenda, like okay. my neighbors doing something that I want to have investigated. Okay. I want to give feedback on something that got, that the Conservation Commission did previously. Okay, so then we'll move into the public hearings. We'll start with uh, 220 Millville Street, uh, Peter Lavoie, DNL Design Group. Do we have someone? Yeah. Oh, he's not not here. Mike okay. is here, uh, but we did get the DEP number and they just recommended uh, confirming the wetland flag, which I did do, um, and I had the wetland delineation report uh, that she asked to see. Um, so I, I guess he's not here to close, but you can close. Remind me which one this is. What's the address? Uh, this is 220 Millville Street. It was the single family house. Um, new construction. I can pull the plan up. Do we have any issues with it or is just waiting for DP's number? We're waiting for DEP comments. Yeah. Well, we continue or close the hearing. What's your? I know they wanted to close. Um, so they're not here. They're not here, but we don't have continue. any other issues. Continue. Be here. There you go. Okay. Well, Mike. Okay. Well, we'll 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 wait and see if someone shows up, and we'll bring that back later on. Uh. Okay. So after. That we would move to agenda. We should have, we should have a 
motion to motion. Okay, move I'll that to, move. to the end of the meeting. I'll motion to put it on the table then, so we can open it again. I'll move the table. The motion to later. Second. Session. Roll call, Susan. Um, I Susan, I. Bye bye. Peter, I. Bi. Yeah, Timai. Did you say something? I didn't. You said Timai. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, 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 my day started at 4 a.m. because I took my wife to Providence Airport, so I'm holding it together. Every day starts. Uh, all right, so passes. Mine started at 3.30, all right? Well, okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> passes unanimously. <laughs> I'm I'm normally got not getting up until eight. Oh, so you're not used to it. I see. No, I'm not used to it at all. <laughs> Need an espresso machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. All budget. right. So we'll move on to the uh, Sylvan Springs NOIs. Is there someone here for that? Fred is not here. Well, it says TBD. We haven't gotten the numbers. It looks like. So give us the status on what DEP has said about things. Yeah, um, the Sylvan Springs subdivision, they didn't have <coughs> stormwater reports for Ross and Farm Drive. The open permit uh, 218745 is for Locust Hill Drive and Tyler Lane. Um, so DEP pointed out we need stormwater reports for the three Ross and Farm Drive. Um, Fred didn't formally request to continue, but he's not here yet or isn't coming. So. <laughs> okay. Or we can continue without his permission, kind of sort of, can we? See, that or deny it. I would... Did he tell you he'd like it continued? He said it seems like we have to. I, I'll, oh, I'll take that as if he's he's okay with our continuing. Well, I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing for 24 Roston Farm Drive to the next meeting on August 8th. Second. 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 Discussion. Roll call. Susan. Susan, I. Bye bye. Peter, I. Yeah, I. Tim, I. Mike, I. Passes unanimously. On to the next one. Same thing. 31 Ralston Farm Drive. I make a motion to continue the public hearing for 31 Ralston Drive, Farm Drive to the next meeting on August 8th. Second. What, what was that motion? To continue. 31 Ralston. 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 Any further questions? Roll call, Susan. Susan, I. All by Peter, I. Leah, I. Tim, I. Mike, I. Also passes unanimously. On to agenda item 7, 22 Ralston Farm Drive. I'll make a motion to continue 22 Ralston Drive. Farm, farm Drive. Second. To when? Excuse me. Continue to when? Uh, later on in the meeting or? Till next meeting. Oh, Please. next meeting? Are you reading the sheet where it says that? No. There's cheat sheets. If you turn, I second the motions. See the italicized things. I'm just pointing to the italicized things. Go to the next page. Flip, and you'll see I the next one. It'll say at the top. Motion sheet. Not used to this quite yet. Oh, I like it. It's a great time saver. Yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, underneath that, it says suggested motions. Yep. 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 OK, so could you re restate your motion? Please? I make a motion to continue the public hearing for. 22 two. Ross and Farm Drive. For to the next meeting yeah, to the next meeting on August 8th, on August 8th. Yep. Second. It's like folding tea. Sorry, sorry. Moved, moved and seconded. I'll, I'll, I won't make another motion. <laughs> Any further uh, heckling or discussion? Yeah. <laughs> I'd love a good heckle. Roll call, Susan. Um, Susan, I. Bob, I. Peter, I. Leah, I. Tim, I. Mike, I. Passes unanimously. Okay, now we'll get to uh, the big the big presentation for tonight. Notice of intent for 214 and 198A for Providence Street. HP number uh, still not uh, present. Come on up. They must be really tardy, huh? Summer, and most of their staff got promoted. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, do you want to start, or is Isabella going to start? I'll start. Yeah. 
uh, for the record, I'm Dylan Lindholm. I'm the assistant town planner. Um, and I've uh, Scott Salvucci here from Woodard and Karin. Um, the town has um, taken Woodard and Karin on as our consultants for this project. Um, just for some background, I know I think you've seen us before. This project is on a town owned parcel. Um, it's landlocked, but we have an easement to it. Um, the land was donated to the town for the purpose of water, a water source. And as an increasingly scarce commodity, the select board many years ago asked the town to look into this water source to protect it and to make sure in the future, if it became necessary to use, we'd have a water source. Menden is not self-reliant when it comes to water right now. And it would be probably very helpful for the town in the future that we would be self-reliant when we need to be. Um, so we have select board support. We've only used grant money for this project so far. And um, right now we're in front of you just to continue studying this water source, not to construct anything. Good evening. Uh, so we have a number of members joining us virtually as well. Um, some of the engineers from Water and Current staff uh, and also wetland scientists from uh, a subconsultant team member of ours, LEC Environmental. Uh, so Greg and Andrea will be speaking to this a little bit as well. And uh, just building off of what Dylan said, um, you know, the the big picture, the big picture, the vision for the town is is a reliable municipal water source. Um, so there's a lot of work that's been gone into this um, over the past few years. And we're now at a step where we're ready to kind of come to you all and the objective of the permit in front of you and the and the project in front of you is is really um, access into this uh, landlocked parcel and long term pumping tests to evaluate the quality and quantity of the water uh, as we continue to permit in a, in a more detailed way on a municipal water source with with mass DEP. So that's that's really the, the purpose of tonight is is to get access and perform a long term pumping test that um, Andrea and Greg will speak a little bit more about. And I think we will go to Andrea first and she'll talk about the resource area delineations, the wetlands, the riverfront, um, and then Greg will get into kind of the the nuts and bolts of of what the you know the engineering has said how we're going to access the site and and what we'll do out there. So, before you get into questions, I'd like to set expectations for people in the audience. Could you be specific about what exactly it is that you will be asking the CONCOM to approve, not at tonight's meeting because we don't have all of the paperwork from DEP, but what the next phase is that the CONCOM would be asked to approve. Yep. So it's really, and, and Greg will get into detail of this as we go, um, but really the permit in front of you now is access uh, through the town easement into the town's parcel. So it's a little bit of a couple trees to be cleared, a few trees to be cleared and a path to kind of be a little uh, graded and leveled. Uh, and then it's access and long term pumping. So pumping from anywhere from five days to 15 days straight, monitoring that um, and assessing quantity and quality of water. And, and does it have an effect negatively or positively um, so no uh, on the stream? The wetland to get access? Crossing the wetlands? Of a wetland or? No, no. Uh, no, no. But, uh, you know, again, the team will get into the more details of it. I don't want to. Uh, speak out of turn, but yeah, yeah, there's it's we'll be working in the buffer zones. So okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, I, I have some materials here that uh, I believe I can share my screen and it should pop up. Uh, just bear with me a moment here. Is is this visible? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, I think uh, Dylan and Scott covered our, our project overview and goals. Um, just to uh, get on to site location, just to uh, make it clear where this project is taking place in town. This is 214 Providence Street, a parcel owned by the town of Menden. And there is a permanent easement in favor of the town on 198A Providence Street. That connects this parcel to Providence Street, and this would constitute our access to this parcel. Uh, this plan shows uh, an overview 
of what we largely intend to do. These three red dots that are located at the northern end of the parcel, these have been identified in uh, shorter term studies that were conducted in the previous months and years. These three locations are potential locations for full scale municipal water supply wells. As of right now, these are just two and a half inch test wells. They are not full scale wells. What this project, what we're uh, asking for permission to do is to conduct a prolonged pumping test, wherein these three locations would be manifolded together and pumped at a combined rate of 180 gallons per minute for a period of five to 15 days. And during that time, we would measure the response in the wider aquifer. Here we have a proposed monitoring well that we would drill in, uh, in September prior to starting up the pumping test. We have two locations here that where we would drill additional monitoring wells. And then we have existing monitoring wells this orange dot here and this orange dot down here that we would utilize to measure the aquifer response during pumping. We also have a series of piezometers, which are uh, basically just short tubes driven into the ground that allow you to measure the response in saturated wetland areas. We have a series of piezometers that will install one, two, and three. The purpose of these is to evaluate any impacts to the wetlands and to the uh, resource areas. We'll also utilize staff gauges, which are basically just big rulers that we'll put in the stream that we'll be able to use to monitor whether or not, uh, to, to monitor changes, changes in stream level during the pumping test. These three wells, when they're manifolded together, will uh, pump through a four inch discharge hose. This hose will be strung about 500 feet down to the south and the hose will discharge back directly into the Mill River. This is downstream of our pumping area. So that is um that that's the gist of the work that we're looking to perform at this point. Um, I, I suppose uh, does anyone have any questions or or uh, desire any clarification on? What I just went over. Just a question: What do you do for protection of that flow coming out of that pipe? That's a lot of put it into a stone. I don't know what you do to slow down the volume, or it's going to come out like a fire hose, right? 180 gallons a minute for five to 15 days. It's a lot of water. And you're putting it in the river, so maybe you don't have to worry about that. Is the end well, of the pipe just? I don't. I don't know. What are you putting in the river? The, the end of the pipe that the water, running the water back. Is, but I'm the, saying, but do we know what the quality of the water is that we're putting back into the river? I'd like no. to ask some questions. Okay. Uh, we, can answer, we can answer that question. Mike, what's first. your question? Then get an okay. answer. Okay. I want to start with how deep are these wells? The Should wells. Answer the, use question. Uh, the wells are around 60 feet deep, plus or minus four or five feet. Okay. And do you have. Uh, the soil boring results, or did you do any soil boring tests to see what kind of material? Uh, yes, we did. Yeah, we, we have we have we soil have boring logs. If you would like to see them, we can certainly yes. share them with you. Yes, I would like to see them. Absolutely. Um, yes, right. I would too. So, I some in, the in general, in the ruled binder or in the black on the very bottom of that pile there. And uh, I had the same question that Peter asked, but do you have any uh, diagrams of the discharge point so you can show so we can see it on paper what what it's going to look like? Are there going to be hay bales around it that's going to dump into the water and bubble around? Like I said, 180 gallons a minute, I believe you said approximately. For five to yep. fifteen days. Uh, yep. If if the wells produce constantly, that's a lot of water dumping into a uh, into one spot. So I'd like to see some. So the 
the, the what, what you plan on doing doing with that the end of that discharge pipe sure so the the plan would be to use uh several sheets of plywood uh likely at least three um, on the bank of the river and to lay the hose onto the plywood so that would uh give the chance to dissipate the energy of the flow and scatter it into the stream so that way it's not just uh like a fire hose blast as i think i heard someone describe it but more of a uh more of a waterfall over several sheets of plywood All right that that i i like that that'll break down the velocity of the water but what if there's sedimentation coming out of the well as well going into the river there not be any sedimentation coming out of these wells in which we got a case we got a problem right? <laughs> well we don't know but they're going to be checking the quality well yeah, we actually do know. So that these wells are have been developed. Uh, that is a process that was done when they were installed. Uh, so it's a method of pumping the water wherein uh, the the sand and silt has already been evacuated from the well column. So the water that's going to come out of these wells has already been observed to be pretty much crystal clear. So we're not expecting to see any sediment or silt to be discharged out of these wells. My concern would be getting sediment at the other end. So hitting plywood is good, but plywood sitting on the bank or is it in the water? I, I don't know. You guys, um, it's not uh, complicated. I would imagine that's why I asked for some uh, details on it, some drawings on it. But I would imagine it's a common practice. If the river is right there, you put plywood out like this, the water dumps on the plywood. and So it extends down. over the bank kind of. Makes sense uh, to me. But again, I'd like to see some uh, details of that so we can see it. I'd like to see the detail of the wellhead that's going to be at the end of the pipe that you're uh, driving down. I'm sure there's going to be a screen on it, which uh, I'm sure would uh, keep the silt and the, and the sand. That's sure, why I sure, want to take sure. a look at the soil samples to see what kind of material it is. Can, can yeah. I ask about the piezometers? What are they measuring for? Ground water up and down. The, those are measuring height. water level, just uh, shallow, shallow water levels. So there's they're short lengths of pipe with a screen on the end that are just pushed into the ground by hand. They're only one inch in diameter, uh, but those allow us to measure the response, the groundwater response in the shallow zone in the wetlands. I think it would be helpful if, in addition to an engineering diagram for the outflow, if there's another site where you have a, you can take a picture of the water coming out, going onto plywood, the plywood diverting it into a stream. That, that kind of photograph would be helpful as well. It is marked on um, figure two that you all have. Uh, the Pose is the red line going through the site, and then the red square on the bottom is going to be that discharge point. Yeah, oh, yeah, I saw, I saw that. I'm looking to see if there's any details. There's no detail that, that would have oh, no. uh, answered a lot of questions. Like they had a sidewalk last week that uh, I attended. Uh, we walked it, we saw the path that they're going to go in. Anything that any trees that they're going to need to move to get any kind of equipment in there they have them all marked uh they have all of their their um protocols taken care of to to, to look at uh to you know they're, they're plain to see uh and we discussed in length about just that the discharge and how it's going to dissipate the energy and that's where the plywood and the several sheets came in to to dissipate it better uh, than than just letting it flow into the water or a single sheet. I I agree to I agree with that method. I've used it many many times myself. Again, I think some details included with the right. prints would have yep. would have uh, helped would be some any... of the members that aren't privy to that kind of work to understand it and I'll eliminate questions in the future of why it was done the way it was done. Any, where any, do you say the boring, where do you say the results are in this? I think they are, I'm not 100% in there. There is a paragraph about the soil results and um, I'm not sure what page they're on, but there is a description about the soils that they had. But I don't know if it was the complete 
likely results. Well, I'd like to I'd like to review the maybe Greg send well, something over. Yeah, yeah Greg, I, I can send over all the well logs. Thank yeah, you. why don't you could you um Greg, could you just speak to the material that we have seen coming out and what we've seen in the short term pumping test of just what that material and that that uh you know this this lens that we're working in has has looked like yes so what we found is uh zero to five feet some organic soils uh to be expected uh from five to anywhere from 20 to 35 feet we generally saw a silty sand and from 35 or 40 ish feet in most borings down to the bottom of around 60 to 65 feet we observed a fine to medium sand with little gravel and in and some pockets of uh very coarse sand and gravel okay so your description tells me that the uh water will flow pretty good through that material yeah we found this to be a a really great location and in the phases that led up to this site and, and choosing this site, there was a lot of analysis, a lot of desktop evaluation of, of the aquifers, and that's what led us to to find this location. I mean, we had about four locations that we were thinking about based on those evaluations, two of which were on public, private, uh, public lands, two were on private. We drilled on two of them, started with the public, and we found this one to be uh, a really great location, so that's why we, we've been really focusing on the site. So, um, the extent of this aquifer is pretty big or it's one of the biggest ones we got in town. It's like the best shot for us, right? Yeah, yeah, especially from, um, you know, and, and Greg, correct me if I'm wrong, but, or add to this is there's been a lot of studies in the past decades looking for water for Menden, right? And so we've looked through a lot of those studies as we came to this determination and some of the locations, you know, in this part of town were showing favorable results in those historic studies as well. So. It was a lot pointing us towards this location. So, How is Mr. Chairman, so the material that you described, I'm take. Uh, I'm assuming that that's why you want to monitor the uh, the stream to see if it. Yeah, and that's part of the stream level. Yeah, and that's part of Mass DEP's permitting of a new source as well. Right, because of the granular material, same material. <laughs> Have there been any studies done on how this will impact the wells that are in the area? Um, there's only so much water underground. Aquifers are very large. They could impact a large area of people's wells. I have well, well, everyone has well water here, I'm assuming, except that's, for yeah, that's, on that side. Right, that's the next so, of this, yeah. So that's the, the one thing that scares me is, okay, we have public water in Menden. Now I don't have water enough water in my well to have a well. Sure. It's, it's a, a little it's scary. A, this, this is a finite resource. Sure, that's a common that's a common concern, right? Like, hey, you're putting in a well right near my well. What's going to happen? Um, Greg can speak to that a little bit more. Uh, these are this is going to be a shallow well. But field. have there been studies done? Is what I'm saying. Well, that's what we're up to. Right? That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we're up to. study now. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, um, if uh, I can add to that a little more, uh, the wells that are installed for homes are bedrock wells. Uh, so those typically extend fairly deep, um, usually at least 70 feet deep, typically even deeper, sometimes hundreds of feet deep, as deep as they need to go to intersect enough bedrock fractures in order to generate the productivity that you need for a single family residence. So the, the bedrock aquifer is does not have a strong connection to the shallow aquifer. Um, that's just a, um, a, a general a general observation about aquifers in the state of Massachusetts. So people, single family homes um, could be affected by a municipal scale bedrock well, because it would be pumping from the same aquifer, the bedrock aquifer. Uh, but in this case, we're pumping from the shallow overburden aquifer. So we would not expect it to impact anyone's, uh, any wells at, at a single family residence that is tapping the bedrock. Where's the closest single family well to the site? That would be at 198 Providence Street. It's about uh, can you, can you, can about 600 feet away. Inches? I'm sorry. I'd be nervous. I'd be nervous. There are plans to reach out to the homeowners to monitor their well well capacity. 
Hey, it's first come, first serve. I'm sorry. It's like uh, there's there's no. Well, they were there first. No, yeah. Well, no, it's, it's you don't have a grandfather to write to the aquifer. It, it, you can kiss up your neighbor from up and out of his land. It's well, and I think one of the things is we'll we'll have monitoring points right between where we're working and those properties on Providence Street and Deer Hill. So we'll be seeing that. But at the same time, as Craig was saying. They're in a different aquifer than us. That's the whole reason why they're doing this test for five to 15 days. Yeah, so find out a good idea of what, how it's going to affect the uh, what we call in the industry the cone effect of when you pump out of one spot the water just doesn't go down like this yeah. and comes like that yeah. to it. I just have a kind of a ballpark question because how many cubic feet per second is in the West River? So if all that water how many gallons we're going to take out? Is that going to lower the river down two inches, or is you going to be able to measure or model that, or yes, or it's... yeah, I uh, mean, yeah, so yeah, I can answer that. Um, so uh, what we compare to when it comes to impact to a stream is something called the seven Q ten flow. So that is the flow in the stream of the seven driest days within a ten year period. So that reflects essentially the lowest of the low flow of the stream. And by mass DEP guidance, you are generally prohibited from pumping at a rate that exceeds 50% of the 7Q10 flow. And the sought rate, the rate that we are we would seek to permit is uh I, I don't have the number exactly in front of me, but it's something like 35 or 40 percent of the 7Q10 flow. So we are significantly below the uh, threshold wherein uh, we would require special permissions and special monitoring. Um, so and, and as far as what that 7Q10 flow is, I, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head, but it's something on the order of like 40 or 50 cubic feet per second. Um, so it, it's a, it's a qu quite a bit of water. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, Susan has a question. She might, this might be yeah. her, this Susan. is her wheelhouse. Susan, do I have a question? Hey, thank you. Um, quickly, um, I was looking through your package. I did not see any analytical data for the water. Which kind of data? A little bit. Water quality. Uh, uh, water quality? Yeah, um, yeah, any analytical that's required. Uh, by the town. Um, for example, when I built my house here, we had to run a full suite of analytical VOCs, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yes, absolutely. That's a big purpose of this test is that at the conclusion of, of pumping, uh, we're going to collect a full battery of tests, uh, is dozens of analytes that we'll be sampling for. Um, we have collected various water quality samples up to this point just to get it get like an initial baseline sort of screening value of what the water quality is um and i you know we'd be happy to to share that data with you i think right i think i think a big a lot of these questions right are, are around like what's going to happen what's going to affect and, and that's the purpose of all this right like that's why it's important to get in there and see what happens when we pump at not just a short period, a four hour period, what happens when we pump at five, 10, 15 days, like this would produce for a municipality, right? So we need to make sure that it, it's there and the water's there, the quantity, as well as the quality, as well as the environmental sensitivity around it. So a lot of these questions are, are completely valid questions and that's why this test and this access is so important is to, to see what happens. And, um, sorry. And to reiterate, we're not looking to permit a permanent well right now. We're looking to test. Um, we want to find out if this is a water source that is effective in any ways. Is it productive? We're not looking to actually construct that right now. We're just looking to find out. By getting all your information. Mm -hmm. so you yes. like well, this, yeah. yeah. You know, in, in, in a year, in 50 years, we don't know. But right now, Menden is not self-reliant, and we want to make sure that we protect this for our kids, our grandkids, whoever actually will need it in the future. If it's needed, we'll have it. Well, that's it. Put the well in, then you do have some protection, right? You'll have the well, you have two or something. Yeah, you? there's there's things. Yeah, right, there's, there's things to protect things it now, right? And test it and find out what we have. 
groundwater protection district, zone one, wellhead protection district, you know, areas. Um, yeah, it, it, so it's an important thing that Dylan's mentioning there is there's a lot, this is just one hurdle in a, in a series of many hurdles. We've cleared a, a number to this point and there are many more in the, in the uh, way before we get to any type of breaking ground on construction. There's a lot more questions and this is just, you know, a handful of them here. I have uh, two new questions that are related. First one is uh, noise. How much noise is the pumping going to be generating? Is there noise to be expected with the water coming out at the outfall? And second, how will you decide whether five days is enough or if it needs to go for 10 or 15 days? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Greg will be able to answer all of those for you. Sure. So as far as noise, uh, the pump will be powered by a, uh, a generator. Um, so uh, a small engine. So that that's the level of noise that you can expect. We're we're pretty deep in the woods, um, so I, I can't imagine that it would be very much of a nuisance noise. Uh, in regards to uh, when we know when to stop the test, um, that is actually at the direction of Mass DEP. What we are looking for is less than zero point zero eight feet of change in drawdown in a monitoring well at the center of the proposed well field over the previous 24 hours of pumping. So when once we see that very small change, less than that small change occur over a period of 24 hours, we get Mass DEP on the phone, talk to them, tell them what we're seeing, and then they give us the final approval of whether or not we can shut down the test. And when does this, who monitors this? Is this somebody who monitors this 24 seven? Uh, you know, there's some kind of sensors, uh, Bluetooth, someone going to be panning out. Did you say fences? No, or? people who, who's oh. on sensors. Yeah, there's a 24 hour. Then, oh, sensors. Um, yeah, that, right. There'll be, there's a, there's a drill, a drill, um, a drill company that we've sub consulted or subcontracted that they'll be out there 24 seven. So someone's going to go camping. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they'll probably have a series of, you know, three people rotating on eight hour shifts. Really. They're not sleeping there. Yeah, yeah, they're watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's got a gas off the pump. So any other questions mission before I open it to the audience? I, I have one question. Yeah. Um, natural heritage. Isn't this the Fox turtle zone? It is. So they're doing their review now. OK. Wow, that was good, Tim. OK, so um, what um, when is the testing going to take place? Uh, yeah, what, what so we, we actually do have a number of more slides and we can and we can expedite this a little bit. To, we've probably gone over a number of things that are on the next slides, uh, but we can continue our presentation. There's a, probably a, a little bit more information coming for you yep. for all these answers here. So, OK, go ahead. That's in here. Thank you. So I think uh, Andrea is going to jump on now. Yeah, that's right. Andrea Kendall with LEC. If you can go to the next slide. Um, so in this um, this past uh, early spring, LEC uh, conducted um, a, a site wide wetland delineation. In addition, and I'll go into those details. Uh, in addition, Brian Madden from our office is a wetland si um, the wildlife scientist conducted a habitat evaluation for each of the three species listed um, at the project site. Uh, he and uh, he prepared. Um, a wildlife habitation, wildlife habitat report. Um, he prepared a turtle protection plan. He submitted all the necessary information to Natural Heritage to initiate their um, their review. Right now, that was that was submitted uh, July third. They typically have a thirty day review, so hopefully um, that um, that will be completed in the next week or so, a couple of weeks. Ms. Deanne Merrill is the is the analyst um, for Na from Natural Heritage, so they're having their sidebar conversation to facilitate this joint MISA and Wetlands Protection Act review. Um, in terms of the wetland resource areas, obviously we have the the Mill River um, that extend that flows southerly um, along the eastern portion of the of the site. It's a nice meandering, uh, slow moving river. Um, a very, very uh, beautiful site. Um, and to the west of that, it transitions into um, a marsh, um, wet meadow, 
if we keep going up gradient into a scrub shrub and then forested wetland along along the edge. So the the uh, green line is the uh, BVW delineation. There's a central uh, green line that um, that actually, if you keep on going to the right, um, there's an upland island that was delineated there as well, just just for reference purposes. While you have your cursor on. Um, the red line is the 200 foot riverfront area uh, offset from the Bank of Mean Annual High Water Line of the Mill River. Uh, and as we head south, uh, the we have another uh, river that comes on site, um, flows easterly um, uh, from the v Providence Street. It's Round, Round Meadow Brook. Uh, and so that has its own riverfront area as well. Um, so there is an isolated wetland on the, I guess, northwest portion of the property, and that is jurisdictional under the bylaw only. And so that buffer zone off of that is uh, the bylaw buffer. But the magenta lines, it's 25, 50, I believe, and then 100 foot buffer zone. So you'll see a number of those um, buffer zones offset from the wetland. Uh, there is the site is also within the 100 year floodplain. Uh, I don't have the exact elevation with me, but it is mapped on on the property just as a um, an overlay. It doesn't represent some of the actual elevations on there. But um, so we have bordering land subject to flooding. And I believe those are all the resource areas and buffers. Um, so um, it is, in terms of topography out there, it's it's pretty gent gently, gentle undulations, pretty, pretty level. Um, water flows either to the east into the wetlands or south uh, to the brook and, and the wetlands there. The wetland boundary is a uh, fairly abrupt um, and transition from the upland area down into the wetland, uh, pretty much toe of slope uh, characterizes that. Um, any questions on on what I've offered right now? Uh, yeah, so it mentions um, a potential vernal pool or two. Where are those located? So there's uh, one on-site potential vernal pool to within the isolated wetland in there. Um, and then I think there's a mapped um, potential vernal pool on the northern portion of the site. Um, we don't have that on this, but it is shown on one of the figures in, um, in the application. Probably fig figure three probably shows it. Is there one? Is there something that overlays so we can see where the wells and stuff are going to be on this? If you zo zoom in, I think I have. I have. I, it's just. It's kind it, of hard. Yeah, Greg, are you able to zoom in on that? Because I think on that aerial, it does show up ever so. So yeah, so in yeah. So those wells are in upland areas off of exist existing paths and some of the proposed improvements are also um, in upland uh, yeah so in an effort to be as least disruptive as possible with those existing wells we followed an existing cart path that's on the property and put them on the upland side of that so the axis that we're going to try to you know have through this permit is staying within the easement of of the uh, town's property and then getting back on those existing cart paths as soon as possible so. uh, this figure shows it a little oops might be a little more clear on this one <clears throat> where uh this is largely an existing path it's almost entirely an existing path that goes through the woods and then travels up to the north. And then our uh, three pumping wells are up here towards the north end of the property. 
And uh, yeah, this this path is uh, an existing cart path that we utilized in order to get in there with minimal disturbance. What sort of rig are you taking in? Just a pickup truck or eventually it's going to be a big old drill rig, right? Is that path going to be suitable for access for a big drill rig? So we're we're going 10 feet wide, but I'll let Greg elaborate as well. Yeah. Yeah, at this stage, we're not using large scale drilling equipment. Uh, the rig that drills the test wells is quite small. It's about the size of a pickup truck. Um, so it really has no issues with access. You want to keep going, Greg? Slides. Yeah, yeah. We'll try to wrap up the slides here and get to questions. Sure. Um, so in terms of uh, access and, and our overall work plan, <clears throat> uh, we have uh, some trees that are marked for removal in this area right here. Uh, this is just to widen up the existing path to so that we can get the drill rig in there more easily uh, within the town's easement. And along this, this area right up in here, we have about another nine trees that are marked for removal to widen the path. And also uh, removal of some brush, uh, just to just to widen things up a little bit to make it easier to drive in back here. Uh, for the additional test wells that we're going to drill, uh, these red dots here, there's an existing path already, so there's no improvements that are required in order to get the access that we need back here in order to drill these two monitoring wells. And Otherwise, to access the stream. Uh, we do need to cross the wetlands on foot. So our plan is to lay down planks as needed uh, over any areas that are soft or muddy, uh, just to try to minimize the impact of, of our uh, foot traffic. Uh, we'll need to walk down here to get to the edge of the stream so that we can uh, take readings off of our piezometers and staff gauges. And similarly down here, um, uh, the, the way that it's shown is is a little off. We'll we'll put the discharge right next to the planks, so so we can get down there and observe the discharge and manage it and make sure that and uh, keep an eye on it to make sure that we're not causing erosion and adjust it as necessary. Will the planks be removed at the end of the test? Yes. It, everything will be removed at the end of the test except for the wells themselves. What's what's the method you're going to use? Uh, cut the trees. Yeah, I'm thinking to get brush. And what do you plan on doing it? Are you just going to throw it off to the side, or do you plan on uh, with the brush putting it in piles so you can create some uh, wildlife habitat and the uh, trees themselves, the large pieces of wood? Are you just going to let them lay there? You're going to cut them up into smaller pieces. Uh, what's Again, after, after it's all said and done, what's that going to look like? Sure. So uh, we've engaged a, a tree work contractor to do this work. Uh, the plan is to cut and stack the timbers on site uh, in lengths no longer than 10 feet. Uh, they, we plan to stack the timbers just off the side of the path um, neatly. and. Uh, but we can certainly accommodate uh, if 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 you have any preference in terms of where the timbers should should go. Uh, you know we're happy to we're happy to adjust that. But right now the plan is is all all timbers that are felled are going to stay on site. But you plan to chip some of it to improve the road. Yes. Yes, that's right. Um, in some areas where uh, where the path is a little soft, uh, we will uh, chip up timbers into wood chips about four inches in size to lay down on the road just uh just to prevent uh, tires and such from from rutting the mud you know rutting into the mud and potentially causing an issue um the the wood chi wood chips will be used where needed to to firm up the access road i'm all for chipping and if not chipping right you don't want to leave a big pile of slash was it good practice under two feet or something or it's just that's 
why I asked the question. Yeah. And is it is it included in the plan? I didn't. No, there's a contract with a firm that they're going to use best practice. Well, I'd like it documented so that if when it, when we go out there and say, "Hey, I thought you were going to clean up the place," and we've got nothing to say that this is what was supposed to be, that somewhere in this. Yeah, if it's not in our narrative, we can add that to the narrative. Please do. Yeah. Again, you understand what I mean. Yeah. I understand you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. But that doesn't mean you throw the eggshells on the floor. Yeah. Was there a preference for the brush? You said you'd prefer it to be piled up. Well, if you're gonna wood, if you're gonna drag a, a chipper in there, chip up it the all up and let it scatter Actually, will help, help you, it uh, disintegrate and add to the. Uh, I just want to make sure we heard the commission's trees that are left in big pieces are actually good for yeah. habitat. Yeah, not, yeah. Chip that's what I thought. Not right. little pieces, big, big pieces. pieces. Yeah. It creates habitat for bobcats. Boxes, all those good things. That's what I was hoping. Yeah. So your so your tree removal plan. Make a proposal on what you're going to do, and then people will get sure. their opinions. That'd be great. Once you have something in writing. Mm -hmm. Sure. sure. Uh, next slide. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Greg's driving, probably taking notes at the same time here. So, how many more slides? Is schedule our last? Uh, this is it. Okay. Great. Great. So here we go, uh, Tim. Uh, we plan to clear in early September and the prolonged puppy test in late September into early October, depending on if it's five or 15 days, right? So, which we feel like is, is you know, su substantial time to get here back from natural heritage, close with you all, and, you know, if, if that's well, the case. So, cool. Well, bugs will be uh, disappearing. Uh, anything else, Andrea, Greg, you want to add before we open up to more questions? I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, that's all I have. Question for Leah, our horticulturalist specialist. When you went on on site, I wasn't on site. Oh, you I didn't was. Go to chance to. Do I that. was in the dentist chair. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, well. I, then I won't be able to ask you evaluation <laughs> of species and, and plant life. Okay. Well, if National Heritage is involved, then that's, you know, there's something there that's yeah. so any other worth protecting. questions or comments from the committee before I invite people to come up and talk? I, I have one. Um, it was my understanding when I was out there, you're only taking brush and stuff from the, from the upland side of that path, correct? Yes, yeah, we're widening on the upland side in that existing car path. The existing car path might be, you know, seven or eight feet wide, and we want to get it to nine or ten feet wide. So, yeah. yes, on the upland side. On the upland side. Okay, so if you can move one of the microphones over, and people from the audience want to come up, sure. Have questions or comments? From the audience, questions? Hi. Please give your name and address. Hi, my name is Wendy Burbage, and I live at 200 Providence Street. This is happening right behind my house, so we have known everything that they've been doing. So when somebody said that it's really far back in the woods, it's not that far back. So my concern is so many things. Um, sorry, it's a little nerve wracking to be up here. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, for me, first and foremost is, you know, my family. Um, we've just moved here. It's three years this month and um, we love it. We love Mend in the town. We love the small community. I don't want to prohibit um, fostering good things to happen in the town, but it is concerning because the first interactions that we had weren't necessarily very good. Um, there was some mishaps with property lines and um, communications that supposedly were happening and they weren't happening. And then communications kind of just died and we were communicating with the gentleman, Jack, which we thought we would maybe see here today. And he's not so. Um, What's that, Jack Hunter? Yes. Yeah. Dylan 
Dylan is here from the same planning planning board department. Yeah, and we did meet with Dylan, and then she's the one who actually stopped all communication. So that was a little heartbreaking, um, a little hard being the person that lives there and then not being able to get that communication continuing to go. So my apologies, but that's what happened. Um, there was, it wasn't our property, but it was right behind our property. It's our neighbor that's here tonight. It was one of his trees that wound up getting cut down. That tree was over a hundred years old. I do know um, that there are protected things in the backyard and, and where the town also has access and owns, and I'm concerned about that. I don't know that my concerns were necessarily heard. I didn't feel heard. Um, so it was nice to hear some of the things that you brought up, and I thank you guys for bringing them up because it is important to me. The um, wildlife, the plant life, the um, wells, you know, we're all on wells here. And I guess one of my questions is, how do we know that we are absolutely on two different aquifers? Because that is very scary to me. I know when I brought that concern up to you, your um, reply was, well, then you just get hooked up to the town water. And it's like, then I start thinking in my head, I'm like, well, who, who pays for that? And then how does that all happen? And we don't have a water bill. And, no. <laughs> yeah, right now we don't, you know? So, you know, there's a lot of different things that, that come with that. Um, I'm concerned about the generator running for five days, 24 hours a day, because it is a valley. So whenever they would even just be cutting trees and utilizing a um, chainsaw, you knew. Like I, I run a business and I could be with my client and I'm like, oh gosh, they're, they're cutting again. I, you, you hear it. So if it's going to be running 24 seven, that is a little bit of a concern. I've been sitting here all meeting, listening to whatever is running right now. And, um, you know, it's, it, some people are sound sensitive. I am one of them. Um, I didn't realize there were three species of wildlife that were protected back there. So that oh, was we don't talk about those though. They're just protected species back there. Someone said protected turtles. in the water. Someone said turtles. They shouldn't have done that. There, there's yeah. turtles back there. Yeah, well, we've seen them. The problem is we don't want to advertise there's an yeah. endangered species because someone might come and try and take so, it. Yes. Right. But dropping trees into the water, is that a good thing? Um, because that's happened back then. And it's still sitting there. So was that done as part of getting access to the site originally? Speak to that. Sure. Sure. I can speak to that one. Yes, there was a um, an issue where trees were cut down where they not were not supposed to be cut down. Um, this was an issue that we talked to the property owner. Um, we cleaned up which trees uh, that were cut down that shouldn't have been. Um, there was one that fell into the the potential vernal pool. There, the decision was made to not move that one because it was in the in an area where we thought cause less disturbance don't take it out now it's it's sat there for a few days we didn't want to disturb it again and cut it into pieces and cause any additional issues was the inadvertent cutting done by the property owner or at the direction of town it was done by the by, by the highway department. the highway department okay so the town screwed up mm -hmm. so what the survey dealt correctly yeah that's what it boiled down to yeah. what's the survey dealt? that's what you, you were saying something about property line issues yeah. We've, yeah that all resolved now yes we we uh, got a survey done um everything has now been surveyed you know exactly where to go um we issued a letter to the property owner so that uh he can i know he has a permit with the state about how much land he can clear so we made sure that the town is responsible for any clearance that was done on his property um, which he can use that letter to the state if needed. Does he have a forestry plan? I think so. Okay, yes. Yeah. yeah. Then he, so we, we some, said this is, yeah. So that if there, his forester needs to follow up the, he, mm -hmm. he has a letter from us yeah, we with took, pictures. We took, yeah, we took pictures of the four yeah. trees. Okay. Yeah. And I, can I just add, I just want to apologize if I haven't contacted you. I'd love your phone number or email. I don't think I have it. So that would be wonderful if you can contact. I've called you a few times and never got a response out of you. We'll call back and I'd love to messages. On my phone? On your phone. Yeah. I don't have it. Is it my, my... Excuse me for a second. Right off your yeah. um, 
So oh, could we maybe get the the, uh, the plan up so we can see where they are? In relation? That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Can you bring up the mass GIS? Just so we can see where there probably is in yeah, relation to the disturbance. I, I, I have mass GIS on my laptop, but if you could bring it up and you're at uh, what do you say? Two hundred. Yeah. Brett, do you want to go out or do you want to cut? Yeah. yeah. Right now it's dry. Right now it looked dry, I think, uh, as of a few weeks ago, so we could notice that. Well I don't if think that makes, makes, makes sense. Yeah, I don't I'm not an expert on that. We would have fallen or could have fallen in there anyways. It's, you know, there's stuff a, falls. There's a good amount. Of, well, you saw, you actually yeah. asked the question, you know, yeah. what's this down tree? And it was just a down tree that, you know, fell with a storm or something, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of that out there. And like we mentioned earlier, it, it does create habitat. Um, so, but it's all, it's up to you all, right? So, I mean, if it eases, if it eases concerns and you're going to have a chip of there anyways, it's a small tree. Through the no, no, but it's getting the tree out of the, of the wetland, right? It's a, you can do no, that. Yeah, anyway. it out. I would have, I mean, Andrea could maybe speak to whether we should pull it out or not, but I would have the wetland consultant consider that. Bring up the uh, mass GIS. Or I, that. I'm not sharing. So grab, grab this is it right here, by the way. This is all national heritage right here, a priority habitat. All right. So you I heard this you say right uh, property boundary issues, but those seem to be taken care of. Lack of responsiveness, the two of you can go exchange contact information after we're done with this. You also expressed a concern about aquifer. One of the members of the committee. You're familiar with the difference between the shallow aquifer and the bedrock aquifer. Yes, so he's going to take a look at the, their core samples and he will then be able to say, yep, there are definitely, from the description of the core sample, they're saying it's sand. So he would have the expertise to say whether it's going to impact a bedrock aquifer or not. You also asked about noise, which is what I did. So my question would be, can you like put a cover over the generator or put do some sound baffling? I I believe those exist. So yeah, I mean that that could okay. that could be a lean another piece mitigation. Why would anyways at least yeah. that? Yeah, <laughs> so. a, a mitigation to noise certainly. Yeah, yeah. It's like get it off to the woods. Yeah, because yeah, I work during the day and I don't want to hear that at night. One of the things I will be working with Dylan on probably is whether the town gets a noise ordinance, mm. a, a noise bylaw, because currently we, we do not have. I've seen that come up on the town page, so yeah, <laughs> makes sense. So we're gonna... Okay, um, so are there other issues that you wanted to raise that we can ask them to address before they come back for their next presentation? Um, I guess my questions are in regards to that access road. It it kind of speaks almost like it's like there, and it's really kind of not. So um, I know a couple of times it was mentioned too. 200, yes. Yes. Um, that some trees, a few trees, like, do we know how many? 17. 17 total are going to have to become come down. They're all marked. So out there. I know from walking out there, when you guys first went to go out there, and you said you're going to take down so many, you took down more. You widened the path a lot more than what you had told us. I've been on a lot of construction sites, and I see that happen all the time. You say you're going to do ten feet. Sure, sure. You'll well, end up doing more. Is, so is, we, it, is that cat path on your property? That one is not. Oh, okay. It, but it okay. So it abuts us. Okay. So if one of my trees go down, right? I, I mean, get it. Right. I get it. But it is on town property. Yes. So okay. Okay. All right. So what I what it sounds like we would like you to do, like come back. Uh, a uh, diagram for the wellhead and the outflow. You can find one, a photo of what an existing outfall looks like. A tree removal plan, which would also address the concern he just raised of how do we make sure you don't cut down more trees than you've already fit into. Did we get the And uh, so the tree removal plan should be something that we can hold the forester subcontractor accountable to. And you'll also look into what kind of generator you have and what kind of noise abatement you can do because it's the middle of the woods. If you're running a generator for five, 10 days, that'll disturb the habitat in that area. Isabella, did you get pictures when you guys did your site walk and stuff? There's pictures in the notice of intent. Um, it's in the yeah. SharePoint yeah, the notebook. They were, they're better posed. I'm just saying um, in case, you know, 
we want to have a before and after and um, before the tree work gets done and after. And, and my last question that I guess Leah, if you follow up on. I was going to do a review. When they do, I would look at you and Peter to analyze what Mipa is saying and see whether it addresses the concerns that you're talking with about habitat. We talk about national heritage. Yeah, so the, the, the wildlife uh, in, endangered yeah. species review. I figure you're the best person. Yeah, to, I'm fine with that. Go, go looking at that. Work with Peter on that. Yes. Um, Chairman, can uh, I ask a question? How many pumps are going to be running at the same time? What size pump? Three, three links together, I think. They're going to tie them together, I thought, in one pump. No? Yeah, well, great. That's right. Uh, one pump, three wells manifolded together with one pump. Power that you need to run that pump will be uh, 110. I'm sorry, what was the question? Power to run the pump will be 110. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. It depends on what equipment the contractor brings. Uh, they, they'll bring a pump and generator that is appropriate for the application. Uh, so that's what I'm getting at. So we don't we don't know what size generator <laughs> is it going to be a big diesel generator tag along. Uh, the way it was presented, I thought it might have been the five uh, one you can throw in the back of a pickup truck. Yes. Oh, it sounds a little more intricate than that. From what I've seen in construction sites, it's probably a tow long thing. So that's going to be right out there. Well, if you're going to if they're going to pump for five to ten days, and there's right. going to be a 180 gallons per minute, which is a lot. Yep. You're going to need some power. That's yes. That's no, no, I mean, right, right, right. I think they should kind of include that. So the next time when you ask that question. Yep. What's the noise level going to be? We can look at the spec. <laughs> so if that becomes a problem, noise, what happens? Call is to mitigate it. Isabella calls them. They Isabella. call the contractor, and the contractor puts up supply with. Them. Okay. Can I just ask a couple of questions, yeah. uh, Dylan? So is this a project that you're? Um, Pretty much overseeing as far as people going in on the property and stuff like that. Now I am. You are. I wasn't in the beginning of the project. And now I, I'm there almost every time there's going to be major activity. Um, I know Water to Kern has had some people walk in and out uh, to do some monitoring. I'm not there for that. But now any tree activity, I've been there for um, site walks. I'm there now. That, that's what I was getting at because yeah. um, just just a little bit of experience. So um, over the years, we've had people come in for with cutting plans, and if you're going to be the, you know the point person or involved, I would definitely make sure that property line is yep. is marked clearly because yep. these guys come in and, now. and they have cutting plans, and some of them are kind of loose, you know, and they and we've. We've gone through it in several different areas in town. Peter, I'm sure you were and they, Michael. They, they went and cut down. The yeah. Line. So yeah. just so, you know, I would just be. You know, After this last issue, I said I wanted to be there every time that something happened. Or, or at least make sure it's clearly marked. Exactly. And, and, the, and the person. And this time all the trees are. To stay, on, yeah. to stay on the right property. Exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's my goal. And that's why I'm out there. I'm I know you can't, ba you can't babysit everybody, unfortunately. Yeah. But Hey, the more but I'd, I'd rather the be there than not be yeah, there. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Three companies get a little overzealous. Happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. happy. Yeah. I also think there's been a much clearer communication with Water and Current and the property owner whose easement we uh, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. You're always much better to hire a tree company that's full of arborists. Yeah. Exactly. Rather than the tree barbarians that just flash yeah. and burn. Yeah. 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 So, and and right, and make right, sure you we'll vet, be out there. Make sure you vet that tree company because mm -hmm. you can't once they're down. Yeah. 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 They're down. Yep, absolutely. You can speak to all the tree that that wasn't marked on Bex's now. Yes, no, yep, yeah, they're all marked on Bex's now. I'm going to go out before we do any of this work and make sure I know which ones have X's on them too. Yeah, and yeah. where they're located in relation to boundaries. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So if if you go and get Dylan's contact information and they get yours, then you can work with. Uh, giving notification for when there is going to be activity on site in okay. September. That hasn't happened. And we have her contact information. Okay. We have reached out to her. Well, we'll try again. So so we'll try again. Forward. We'll, yeah. Yeah. We'll, no. it's, we only, you know, 
her, her brought that her up. Office. That's fine. She's she's not in this building, but they're they're in the the one next door. In the right. Oh, I've gone in there. We know. Yeah, we know. Can I ask one more question about if, if this all comes to fruition, what type of buildings are we looking at being established back there to house the pumping station? Uh, we that's way too far advanced really to give a definitive answer, but really a small building with with a little bit of treatment for, um, you know, iron and manganese, things like that potentially, uh, but a small building. At most, and there'll be something running, pumping the water, though, in that building. Sorry, yep. how much noise is? There? Yeah. Uh, no, well, those good. could all be contained. So you know, certain there'd be a lot of specs and design that goes into that. So it's it's way too far in the future to really try to speculate on that. That's a whole that's a whole yeah. other issue yeah. down the road. That might not even pass at college. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's so many hurdles yeah. in the way that Fred this is you know this is not imminent by any means. Yeah. I mean, the test we do right now might say. You draw down from the river too much. Right. And it's it's so, not feeding. Yeah, that's why we need to every step that we take, we can increase our level of confidence, whether this is the right spot or not. And so we're at that stage with this site is we need to know confidently. Do we start to, can, you know, do we start to really take the DEP permitting and the initial designs further? Right. So if it ever got to that point, it's a small structure. Electricity is brought down to the side. This, yep. you know, it's not generated, but maybe a backup generator would be on it if it ended up being a well site. But it is a small building, just like most municipalities. Right. No, I, I understand. If, if it does, if it does become a source of water for the town, there will be a building. There will be a backup generator if power goes out. Because I mean, that's like you say. That's in the future, and that's all in the planning stages. Uh, the noise level will not be, it's not, noise level isn't going to be anything to be worried about, because it's all contained. The wells, the pumps that you use to, to draw water, whether you're pump, trying to pump a million gallons a day or, or 100,000 gallons a day, are designed to be quiet. It's not like, 1930. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I do this for a living. No, no, I can treatment say plants. no, no. Water treatment. Yep. Sewer treatment. So we've come a long way. Yes. You're not looking to build that here, right? Though that's like not <laughs> anything that's going to happen in the future. Like what well, that, right? Because that'd be bad. Not a lifetime. <laughs> okay, good. Mm -hmm. So it was. Uh, do the other people in the audience, uh, are you speaking for them or do they, they want to have, have, have any issues? That we play? A quick question about the tree uh, plan, uh, tree plan. When do we think we're going to have that completed and will it be before September? It'll be before the next hearing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so we plan to come back. Sounds like we'll be continued. Cool. Come back on August 8th, is it? Yes. Yeah, okay. and we'd have that we'd have that all prepared before that hearing. So we'll really we'll get to work and get to answering these questions, get to providing the details and the plans that answer these questions, get them to the commission so they have a chance to digest them. So when we're back here two weeks from now, they can feel like their questions and the butter's questions have all been answered sufficiently. That's number eight. Once they get the office, if you want to review the plans for their. Anything you want to see is in my office. Yeah. And will we know the dates when we're targeting the actual work in September at that time? We will. I mean, there's, there's, we still need to make sure we hear back from Natural Heritage that we get to go ahead, talk with DEP, get this closed and approved. So there's, there's still more to do. But, um, but then, yeah, we would, we would get our subcontractors lined up and get them to give us dates. And then we communicate those to all parties that are interested. So, so Dylan, you're going to be reaching out. When we have these dates. Yeah, I can. Uh, any contact information I can collect from people. Or, yeah. yeah. So it seems yeah. like you know you both as butters, and then the one one ninety eight A has been certainly asking for updates. So yeah. those three butters right now are the, are going to be on the list. So I have one last thing. Because usually when an email goes out, it's four o'clock the day before. So uh, and what is it? Get, what's it usually say? What's it usually? Say? What kind of content does it have in there? Whatever's going to be happening the next day. That's more. Twelve yeah. hours later. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a reason why it's that late? Or 
Well, a lot of the, the yeah, schedule. a lot of the work that's happened recently has been wetland scientists going out to flag, surveyors going out to survey. So it's about their avail availability right in the weather. And um, I do leave it to him to yeah. to write those emails. Yeah, so I, our, I team, our team writes those, yeah. One so as soon as we hear from our subcontractors, hey, yeah. we have availability and the weather's correct, the surveyors go out and we, we let you know as soon as we can. Um, things like tree clearing, we're going to nail that down at least a week in advance, we would, we would help, right? So that's something that we don't plan to let somebody know with just hours in advance. That's we're we're striving to get days in advance with tree clearing and pump testing. So the two the two big pieces of this permit. Set anything further? I make a, do we have to do a motion or anything? No. Okay, we're good. Uh, okay. Yeah, motion to continue. Motion to continue. Make, make a motion it. to continue the public hearing for 214 and 198 Providence Street to the next meeting on August 8th, 2024. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Susan. Okay. Susan, I. Bob, I. Peter, I. Leah, I. Tim, I. Mike, I. Passage unanimously. Thank Thanks you for coming, and I Thanks. hope that we get all of the required paperwork in time for our state meeting. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Uh, we'll now move on to uh, agenda item nine, forty-five forty-nine Uxbridge Road, to EC two one eight dash zero eight four. You most recent Swift report, Isabella. You got one today. I will. Um, Owen, would you? Yeah, it looks like they've excavated a lot of the material um, and it looks like, you know, it looks okay. So no other updates that I can share. So they have the box culvert footings in. That's the main change besides excavation on site. Um, they've excavated a lot of the area that was blasted. Has the blasting been completed? I think they are still uh, hammering out the material they need to, so I think there is still a second round of blasting needed. Have they created the channel where they want the stream to end up yet? They have. Because um, it would be nice to get that a little finished before we put water into it. Yeah, they have. Um, this photo has the grass growth and the channel where it is. Um, okay. I think at all the wetland replication is halted because they're trying to get the box culvert in um, and they haven't made progress with that with the plastic. Yeah. Mr. Chair, what was the result of the field visit as to whether it was going to be cleaned up? Is that I missed a report on that? We're waiting for the SWIP inspector to say it's dry enough yeah. and then you would contact the people we hired to do the, the company we did for the peer review. So we'll find out more about that and when Sean and his team is in here two weeks. All right. Um, there's no action for that. Uh, and the item 10, 134 North Avenue, enforcement order review existing conditions and mitigation plan. Uh, the applicant requested to continue on this, so I don't need to go over to an assistant. So we'll bring this up again. The recommendation, of Isabella, this is uh, not something that we need. It's it's not, there's nothing imminent, so it's okay to wait uh, for them to come back when their team is available. They're still analyzing the core samples and uh, hoping that they give the core samples soon enough for us to not have to, to give it to us so that we, the rest of the committee can review it for a couple of days. All right, um, now we'll move to agenda item 11, 133 North Avenue. Review and discuss activity that may be in violation of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Wetlands Protection Bylaw. This is what we Brodsky is here for it. Isabella, could you uh, give a brief overview of what the issue is? And then we'll let Brodsky speak. Yeah, um, again, this was the complaint I brought up last week for violation uh, that was brought to the office. 
that wants to remain anonymous, um, but potential for fill in the wetlands, what looks like fill um, down the slope on the southern lee side, uh, a large section of BVW, and then clearing along uh, Muddy, Muddy Brook River um, and some structures potentially going over the building as or over the stream as well, from what I can see in the aerial imagery. Um, is it worth just showing the pictures one more time? I have not had a recent review with town council on this parcel. My expectation is that I would not be needing to recuse myself on this one, but Susan Cahill, our vice chair, might need to. But we are not going to be doing any deliberations this evening. We're just going to be hearing uh, what attorney Brodsky has to say and then uh, Probably, but we'll see what 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 we want to do after we listen to his response. Uh, before you continue, can you just um, so get our bearings here? So this is Hopedale Street and North Ave. Um, oh, okay. Here's the existing barn on the property. Right. This is a wetland delineation from when these four houses got subdivided, uh, and this was submitted with a building plan when the garage got demolished by the current owner. Um, here is Muddy Brook coming down through uh, north to south, and then you can see the BVW extends up the property with the delineation. So, um, wait, when were those uh, that delineation that you talked about when those houses were built? What, what year was that? Do you know, the delineation is is submitted from 1998, um, but the aerial photos do indicate that that area was always wet. I saw some aerial folders that I was looking at. That's why I wanted to get my bearings back before. It might have been just before those houses were built that um, it didn't show anything going up gradient. But uh, you know, but that was on uh, uh, that was on Google uh, imagery. So I was trying to get my bearings as to what we were talking about. So there's a wetland up gradient behind those lots. It's the yeah, the wetland oh, here. So this is map DEP two, okay. which is actually smaller than the. Uh, the field delineation showed. Uh, How far back did you go aerial wise? So when here you... is 1990. You can yeah. see it is wet through here, or it seems to be wet. And you can see Muddy Brook. Can you enlarge that? Oh, she was wet where? There's always some vegetated strip here. Where it wasn't mowed where the field. So you see the edge, the edge of the field appears to be following this area. You can't tell it's wet. It's different vegetation, right? It's, it doesn't, uh, look, it's, it doesn't look any different. Now look at this picture here. Let's see. Well, it's green. What year is this? It's green in the times of drought. <laughs> you know, everywhere yeah, else is uh, dry. It's it's so far uphill from like the, the river. That's why I was looking at it. I'm like, yeah, how, does, how, does it go, how does it go uphill? <laughs> okay, thank you. 2008 still with the BBW system coming through here. Um, and it's still there here. So there you can see more of a defined, appears to be more of a defined channel. That's after the house is done. Oh yeah, there's houses there, yeah. Why that bright yeah. green? That's, not, that's a chemical lawn. Yeah, but it is. It's a lawn, <laughs> it's almost a lawn on crack. Sounds great. Sure. But in AstroTurf. Um, but where is it? Isn't that on his property? No. No? Or is that the stone wall? So now, well, from now we get. Is the property line that defined line right there? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that would be the stone wall. It makes it easy. In an area that was map wetlands. And then there's some structures here going over Muddy Brook, which could be impact potentially to border to land underwater bank. Those um, were never there. BW. Those were never there before. They're not in. In these ones now. Do we know what that is? It's a bridge or a walk, uh, something to walk across? It appears a bridge and a small structure here, but I'm not sure. Like a shed or something like that? Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay, Attorney Brodsky, please. Well, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Adam Brodsky. As you know, I'm an environmental and land use lawyer, and I'm here on behalf of 133 North Avenue, LLC. 
And uh, uh, as you know, the rest of my team is scattered, so you're stuck with me tonight, and we were asked to have a representative. Uh, we're in the process of evaluating the information that Ms. Genova gave to us, but I, I just want to make a few observations. I understand that this is all part of the historic Davenport farm and has been farmed for, if not decades, centuries. Uh, I actually looked at some of the makers information because um, some of these structures are historic. And so, as, as you know, um, it would not be surprising that large portions of this property have historically been in land in agricultural use. And that um, it would not surprise me that many of these activities are normal improvement or maintenance uh, within the land and agricultural use, which would be subject to uh, the agricultural exemption and the State Wetlands Protection Act, as well as your local bylaw. And so I would just ask the commission not jump to conclusions. Uh, as you likely know, I mean, you're a right to farm community, you deal with farming all the time. Um, in certain instances, uh, you can farm in wetlands and in buffer zone to wetlands. And I'm not suggesting or conceding uh, that there are wetlands uh, in what is presently that farm field. Uh, we believe it's always historically been a farm ditch uh, used for drainage. Um, the structures at the bottom of the slope are a historic spring and pump house um, that have been there for, again, decades, if not much longer, and is the water source for the barn and for the present agricultural fields. So again, we, we've got a lot of uh, information uh, that we'll be presenting to you. And I'd be careful about jumping to conclusions with respect to that 1990, 1998 plan that Ms. Genoa shared with me. Um, that's an approval not required plan. It was endorsed by the planning board to divide uh, that larger farm parcel. Um, there are notes that indicate that those are quote unquote wetlands, but those aren't flagged. I don't have any information regarding a delineation and presumably it was done for purposes of coming up with sufficient you know, upland lot area to justify the division of that property into buildable lots. So again, I just ask the commission to please keep an open mind um, and uh, we'll, we'll be coming back to the commission once we've gathered all of our information. But I want to give you a sense, but I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. You, you know this land better than I do. So I, I don't have much uh, additional information. Uh, happy to answer any questions, but um, we're, we're uh, looking into all of the concerns raised by the commission. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming and, and being the person out in front uh, while everybody else in your in your team is taking a giant step backwards, I was prepared to not have anyone here on this. And, and delay oh no, we were we were we were Ms. Jennifer asked to have someone, and okay. they're not taking a step backwards. They're just working in other towns <laughs> tonight, so yep. uh, you're you're stuck with me. Okay. Um, all right. So if I can summarize, what your team will be investigating is whether there is a relevant agricultural exemption under uh, the WPA and the Menden uh, right to farm bylaw. You're going to look at whether that would be considered a farm ditch and whether the 1999 uh, was an actual wetlands delineation or something that is not, could, could not, we, we can say would not be considered that. And you're going to be uh, giving information about whether the structure at the bottom of the slope is a historical spring and pump house. Just, just to clarify, the, the agricultural exemption is in your local wetlands bylaw. It's not within your right to farm okay. bylaw, which is a general bylaw. And, and again, the, the issue of whether that's a wetland or not, um, you know, on the southern side of the field um, may not even be relevant because, um, for example, I believe that this was a dairy farm for, for many, many years. And so you can actually have uh, dairy cows grazing within wetland areas. It's, it's all, you know, perfectly appropriate and a legitimate farming activity. So again, okay. we'll, we'll, I, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, be careful. I'm not making any representations regarding that 1998 plan other than just observing it and seeing what it was used for. Um, but, you know, I, I can't really make heads or tails of that. But uh, again, thank you. 
Okay. What What do you think you will have available on August eighth? I don't know. Okay. So we're 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 looking at we're we're looking at some of the same resources that I think Ms. Jennifer's looking at, um, which is some of the his historic aerial photography um, for gathering information regarding the historic uses. Um, some of which, obviously, that the current owner has has command of. I, I will be able to speak. Uh, I the group will be able to speak more intelligently about the spring at the bottom of the slope. Uh, obviously, obviously, uh, to get access to that pump house, you have to cross. Uh, you have to cross a muddy brook, and I believe that those structures have been there, as I said, for for decades. So there's there's a a logic to uh, what's uh, been going on out up there for. It appears to be decades, if not longer. Uh, any other questions from the commission? Thank you. Yep, Bob. You want to ask you? Or... Well, go ahead. Attorney Brodsky, do you know whether or not there was a drainage pipe put in where that drainage um, area was? Uh, was are there you, anything to carry water from the top of the slope down to the bottom? Uh, that's a good question, sir. I asked the same question because I know that historically, um, in instances, there were clay pipes used for these types of conveyances. So I did ask that question and we're investigating that. I don't know the answer to your question. Okay. Thank you. Something You're welcome. I, I heard. No, no. Okay. Uh, Isabella, any follow up? Okay. Any further discussion on this matter? All right, thank you for coming and, and giving us more information on this. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Uh, agenda item 12, We well, I pulled to the beginning of the meeting to get home early. Uh, agenda item 13, Cook's Crossing. Your proposal for a construction change at the detention basin 2. Uh, Isabella, can you give us a historical background? And then I look for input from the longtime members predate me on what what was going on in the subdivision? I think Carlos and Mirage are here to speak about it more than I can, oh, cool. um, but there was a, um, or Mirage is attempting to get Cook's Crossing, uh, the roads accepted, that's Amadon, Cover Lane, and another one, um, and Jeff Walsh, the town's engineering consultant, John Dudley, the highway surveyor, Jack Hunter, the town planner, had all been out on a site walk with the developer and their detention basin number two is not constructed to plan. There's no stone flared apron. There's no TSS removal. There's no fence. Um, and so there is, um, I believe it's, is the as built, um, it's a little unclear, um, but they, are proposing to instead of a sand filter to put in a manhole again carlos will be able to speak more to this if he's available um yes um can i speak go ahead yeah yes so uh, my name is carlos Fejeda. i'm from mp design consultants i'm working with mirage as uh, the the owner developer uh original developer for the property uh, can I share my screen just to show like what we're talking about? Yes. Um, can you see? Uh, can you see my screen? Yep. Yes. So like this is this was what was proposed. So uh, at the end of like the street, there was a main hole that will convey uh, to this detention basin, and there was a flare end in here, and this is what was called like a water quality swale. And then it will go to the detention basin. Um, and this is actually what was the the as built. So it was only like the flare end. There's no uh, there's no uh, storm water. There's no uh, sand filter, which is like a, a device to like clean the water as it goes into the detention basin. So. Uh, my proposal, like that, what we would like to, and then wetland is right up above us in here, uh, and this is all wooded right now. So, uh, if we were to 
to build the the swale and and this has like a, a very like it goes like from 256 254 252 250 and the bottom of like the basin is at 244 so i see like a massive like construction happening in here cutting some of these trees and stuff like that and what i advised my client it was at this point to uh uh, not to build the, the the sand filter. We do have the space. I mean, it it is just like that. At this stage of like the the development, it wouldn't make sense to go out there and build this thing. It would be like too much uh, disturbance. There's a house. There's a homeowner living in here. Uh, so my proposal was to install like a, a storm scepter that will install this uh, in here. Storm scepter does the same. Uh, this is basically what it is. The water comes in here, it filtrates the water uh, to go to the basin, uh, and it will be like a lot less disruptive at this point. Uh, so I, I, I think like there's also a, a timeline involved on this thing. Mirage needs to get like this thing quickly done so he can go to the process of like acceptance of the road uh, on it. So. I, I mentioned to him like that, you know, at this point, because the deviation from the plans and stuff, I mean, we need to go back to conservation and get a permission to uh, to install this device. Uh, Isabella, can you talk about what the planning board would be reviewing and what we would be reviewing? Uh, well, you both review the stormwater. So our concern is impacts to wetlands, uh, the stormwater, the stormwater manual applies to both planning board and Tom Tom, so you do review the same standards. Um, Graves said he's comfortable with the uh, storm scepter TSS solid removal. However, he didn't know if the discharge was going to decrease because the proposed storm riprap apron was quite large um, and the water quality swale would have also reduced flow. So, and the um, so that sort of flow impact to wetlands isn't something the planning board is going to be concerned of the same way the CONCOM is. Um, the plan that I have printed out for you is the original proposal, whereas that is the, you know, that's the as built. Um, and so the forward we can have. So the question I have is why didn't it get built according to plan? Is there a reason why it didn't? So if it didn't, why aren't we asking them to do it according to plan because you got the room i don't really care about disturbance to a house that's there if there was a plan that the hydronet dynamic separator might be better but i'm a little concerned with long-term maintenance right no one's going to maintain that grass well granted but at least it's a little more self-maintaining so and I don't know. I, Can it handle the volume of water? Well, that was the other thing. Spring? You now need to do an analysis so there's not the detention that was provided by this long grass swale that's now, I don't know, that's a, that's a more planning issue. So Well, no, because if it doesn't handle the discharge of water, that's going in the wetlands eventually. If well, it overflows, it's going to go into sorry, the wetlands eventually. But, it's that the amount of it's the, the rate, speed. The speed. Yeah, that's the point exactly. Of that's what I mean. As One note is that when this project was approved, you didn't have the bylaw. So the discharge point is only 30 feet approximately from the uh, wetland, whereas where the discharge point without building it to scale might be further. You can move it back. 15 feet further. Um, but again, I don't. Has the, has the planning board, um, are they um, reviewing this next now in? Their next meeting isn't until middle of August, so if they submit engineered plans, they can be on the August agenda. Otherwise, it will be the September agenda. They're only meeting once a month. Can I ask you guys a question? Because you're good at this. Uh, is this plan the cheaper way to do it? Are they just cheaping out and trying to do it this way? Or I, would I, the regular I, detention pond can, be the best Can thing? I Can I speak to that regards? Well, the, I'd like to hear you guys. 
yeah. I'd like to hear what he's got to say. Okay. The 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 okay. storm scepter. This device is like on an engineering standpoint. Every time I could avoid to install one of those things, I would prefer. It's it's uh, those devices. The people that design these things, they cop like top dollar for it. This thing it costs. It definitely cost a lot more money than install the the sand filter. What my intention was it in here, it was just the speed and disturbance. I mean, we can definitely go out there, cut out those trees. I mean, we are 30 feet away from the wetland and install the sand filter. I mean, what I was trying to do is it cause less disturbance at this point. That was the only intention. No, no matter what they do, they're still going to have to file another notice of intent. Or whatever work they do there, first of all. But... Um... As far as the, you know, you mentioned the maintenance, uh, Peter, you mentioned them, who's going to maintain this wheel. Is this something that the uh, the town takes over? Yeah, part of the road. It's, annually? It's like a detention pond, right? No one maintains it. Well, so the town does target all the retention ones. I don't know if they're getting done in town, are they? Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's no, not. there's a lot of detention okay. ponds of trees in them. So. But, but we're just coming in. There's a storm scepter proposed in the thirty, and it's going to be twice a year, and it's got there's an expense to it. It's not it's not like a grass whale you can just ignore and it'll can't take care of itself. And it's. I mean, I, would be any notice of intent submitted would have to have an operation and maintenance plan, and those get transferred to the town. Yeah. Um, and I think moving forward, they're getting better equipment. They're definitely going to take care of the newer roads accepted and then figure out a plan for maybe a little bond to help maintain. Uh, that, yeah, I'm always all in favor of cutting less trees. I mean, I don't know if as long as this is a better system, you know, uh, just as good. Yeah, I agree with you there. I just don't know anything about this. System yeah, I, I wouldn't want to see them going in and clear cutting this huge area just to uh, to do something that they, there's an alternative to do at this point, I guess. That would be my opinion. Let, let me let me bring up address the subject matter expert. Thing. Uh, Graves is the engineering firm. They're getting paid for by the planning board in the town to review it. So do they have the expertise to do the evaluation that CONCOM wants, or do we need to get another engineering firm to do a peer review specifically for the uh, wetlands uh, stormwater consideration? That would be up to the board. Oh, I think Graves is definitely capable of it. Okay, um, so they're already if they're already engaged with the planning right. board, I mean, why can't we engage them as well? Okay, as our representative. The one thing I see here that that is different than that one is the the back end of it on the discharge. There's riprap showed here, but none none proposed, none shown up there. Well, uh, maybe we could have their and you know engage them in uh, for a review and see what they you know what their recommendations. I would recommend, um, you know, the engineered plans of what's the storm scepter is discharging to out of, and then how that new device compares to what was originally approved in the stormwater report um, with the original notice of intent. Uh, traditionally, the these hydrodynamic devices they they are capable of handling a much larger area than the uh, than the the the, the sand filter. Um, yes, there is the down the downside of this definitely is maintenance. I mean, you know, like this thing. I mean, if you get like uh, they're gonna get like filled with debris. I mean, which is what they intended to be placed over there to remove like total suspended solids and any debris that get down into the line. Uh, and if in the future they don't get uh, they don't get uh, service, I mean, they will serve no purpose. Uh, so that is definitely a, a, a downside of like this device. But at the same uh, at the same token, also like the sand filter, I mean, you know, as water goes through the sand filter and then on, on these slopes, it's gonna it's gonna have like a continuous erosion of the sand and in a way eventually as progresses the sand is gonna go down to the bottom of the tension basin. If you have no maintenance, they also gonna serve no purpose. But it would be a larger area and take longer to um, cause a failure, wouldn't it? Um, my my impression is that, and I didn't have a chance to walk this, but 
it's a very severe slope on that area over there. So, I mean, if you look at the plans that, uh, I mean, it was not my design. I'm just, you know, like what the engineer in here tried to do is that he pulled like, some check dams along the, the path to slow down the flow of water. But uh, yeah. on a hundred year storm, I mean, there's, there's, one, there's but... definitely like good amount of water that's going to come in here. And then that's uh, hard to see. Yeah. The the sand filter, I don't know if like I would have designed this on the way that he did it back when that happened. You think water is going to go? So, yes, yes. so are we, uh, do we have a proposal? Okay. That's that proposed design. That, that, that's what I will take up next. Any other questions on the proposal? Okay, you've now, you've now given us a proposal right. and we've listened yeah. to it. You've heard the interim feedback from the commissioners. Is there something you're specifically asking us before you apply for a permit? Uh, I mean, our intention, and I guess like uh, what Mirage asked me to do, is it because there's a there's a time constraint uh, in getting to these things? I mean, he would like to to get like the the road accepted, and 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 and, and he there's a list of like there's a to do list of things that he needs to comply and 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 correct, like some catch bases that need like grades corrected and pipes. Uh, and this is like one of the the items. He just asked me to address this particular item, and I told him like, uh, I mean, my my gut feeling is it the, you know, what would be like, uh, you know, easier to do at this point is to go install like a, a storm uh, a storm scepter uh, because it will be faster, uh, it will be cleaner. Uh, and, and we don't need to disturb that area. So my proposal is I would like to complete the design, submit for conservation for approval so we can uh, install this device. We will do all the calculations. I'll, you know, verify if we had to improve the flare end and more stone or or, or check. Because, I mean, this, this got dropped in my desk, like, uh, on Monday. So I had to prepare something. And I didn't have, like, all the information that I needed. So... I can definitely prepare a plan and, and come like with a more educated uh, proposal uh, for the following meeting. But but if this is like if if the if the pleasure of the board is it like no Carlos go out there and build what was approved. I mean that's what we're gonna have to do. Well, from the, from the questions I'm hearing that we're open to hearing what we have with the understanding that. There is now a wetlands amendment has a wetlands bylaw, and you need to conform to that. There's no grandfathering, just because the initial subdivision was approved and the original plan was approved prior. Mr. Chair, I, I just point out that I don't think it, they're going to have as much a kickback from us as I would think from the planning board as to this change, because my concern is by shortening up, you're not affecting conservation issues you're affecting the need to slow down the water so it's the planning board that I, has to review that i think if they can if if that's the direction they want to move toward and they're going to submit it to planning board and planning and graves engineering does their um review through. and says look this will work if they maybe there's some you know uh, give and take with them as far as the design goes, but I think if they say you know this will work, then we we would be amenable to to looking at it. I would be anyway. I don't know. Oh, great. Oh. Okay, so the the commission is open for you coming up with a new proposal and then submitting a permit application for it. Um, if you want to have that happen on August 8th, you have a very tight deadline in order to get the public hearing, the public notification time. You can work with Isabella on how that I would works. need, if you want to be on the August 8th meeting, I would need a complete application by Monday. Yeah, um, so it's going to be, it's going to be August 22nd, and then you'd have until August 8th to submit a notice of intent. Um, okay. But I can yeah. follow up with email for that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. The other thing I would ask Isabella is when the planning board gets their permit application dropped and we get ours, if we coordinate to make sure that when Graves is doing an analysis of the planning board work, we're able to get the same person or, or someone else at Graves to specifically look at the wetlands impact that we're concerned. 
Yeah, I talked to Graves a little bit. Um, and the one other thing he did mention is there is one of these storm scepters on the Pond Street development. So the town will have to learn how to manage it. <laughs> um, so that was something else he said if they had accepted this device before. That device is probably going to need cleaning right about now. In a couple we of got, days. got dumped on this afternoon. Man. Yeah, yeah, we did. My drain okay. plugged. All right, so uh, thanks for coming. We're open to whatever you what, whatever you come up with, and we'll review it the same way we do every other NOI. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, can you talk if that mic is Mike Dean? What? Mike, Mike Dean. Is, is it? Uh, yes, it is Mike Dean. I, I saw your email, Isabella, after like 710 or so. So uh, for 220 Millville Road, didn't realize oh. that didn't realize the DEP file number was issued. Because uh, I did reach out to DEP uh, via email and I thought they would respond back to me once they had the DEP file number, but Isabella's question was if we were going to be there tonight to represent <laughs> cl closing the public hearing would be fine with us. Absolutely. We did get a um, DEP number, so it's 218-0848. <laughs> yes, and we have no problem uh, closing the public hearing. Uh, it's my understanding the commission, when I presented, oh, I don't know what, three, three meetings ago now, waiting for the DP file number three meetings ago, I presented and there were no issues with the plan 220 Millville. Um, so you're now taking this agenda item off the table since we have the person representing it. Uh, do commissioners have any further questions on this <laughs> before we make a motion? Well, one thing, um, Susan, Tim, and Mike were not in attendance, so they will not be voting. Okay, that means all four of us have to vote. All right, uh, I need a motion from one of those, one of those not me. I guess I'll make a motion to approve the uh, NOI for. Sorry. <laughs> I make a motion to approve the notice of intent for 220 Millville Road for DEP 218-0848 and issue an order of conditions as drafted by the agent. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Uh, roll call for the people uh, who are eligible to make a vote on this. Can I ask a question first? Yeah. I don't remember this as much as I think I need to. So how do I, if I abstain, is that bad? So we need all of us. Oh, no, no, no. But if you want to refresh your memory, here's here's the stuff. Is that the one for two twenty? No, this is this is the one. I mean, Isabella, did everything seem okay? There wasn't any questions. Nothing. The house is pretty far upland. Um, it's uh, some grading. <laughs> This looks familiar. Uh, yeah. The wetland delineation looked okay. Okay. I'm, and, okay. And it's a three to one slope, right? That's so you went okay. Out, looked at the site recently. I think I hope I wasn't there. I don't think mm -hmm. sure. Okay. You don't want to say what. So, uh, which of the commissioners who are voting on this, Bob? You four. Yep. Bob I. Peter I. The I. And to make a fourth vote, Carl Hummel I. So passes unanimously. So, will you have something for us to sign, or will we do it electronically later? Uh, Mike, do you want that mailed, or do you want to pick it up at the office? Yeah, we we can pick it up. That would be fine. Please. I'm in tomorrow, nine to eleven on Friday. Okay. Yeah, you're on Friday. Not done with my forty hours. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be in nine to eleven tomorrow. Okay, that'd be great. I'll swing by to pick it up. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your time. All right. Um, so oh, over good. 14 and go to 15 updates. Uh, Chair conservation agent. Like task force land use. I don't have anything there. Isabella.
not much. I did get a um, complaint, potential violation uh, for 31 Northbridge Road. Um, I can't see anything from aerial imagery and there wasn't much besides photos. Um, Cutting trees or what's the complaint? Trees, so it looks like um, some form of access road. And so the email just says 31 Northbridge Street. These are from September. Work is still ongoing. Uh, is 31 the south side of the road or north side? North side is north. Side. north, side. north, side is north. The north part of the parcel, there's a uh, wetlands and whatever that stream is going through it. Rock Meadow Brook stream. Yeah, it's beginning of Rock Meadow. So there. That's on Millville? No, Northbridge. Oh, so, North. so, so we're the looking at this long parcel here. Some sort of access road going back, uh, crossing Rock Meadow Brook and into this BBW system. Is that near Washington Street? No, no. This is Northbridge yeah. Street. It's near Forest Park yeah. Drive. Oh yeah. Well, Washington we, Street. You we, take Park Drive. You take the left out of Washington Street. Wait, where's Washington? Washington is here. Oh okay. So if you came up and took the left, it's one of the first parcels. Oh. Okay. And you can see the access road from the street. So someone cut it in. Yeah. So, so, so the real question is, what's crossing the stream, or is there a crossing? Oh, look at right there. Yeah, oh, it's crossing the stream. Yeah, that kind of looks like a. Uh, <laughs> it's a nice pipe. They played it in right. Somebody building a house there or something? I don't know. Oh. Um, and it looks like a couple of trees. Who owns it? Those, those are. Who, own, who owns it? That's not. JT Building and Development LLC. JT. JT. And so I'm not sure if this was a neighbor <laughs> that walked on and took the photos. Yeah. Uh, is someone on Massachusetts Interactive Map? Uh, what is it? So it says the owner. Can you click on it? JT Building. Yeah. And what's their building. mailing address? Uh, 2 Mill Street, Franklin. 2 Mill Street, Franklin. Okay. I don't have a problem with cutting the tree so much, but that pipe, <laughs> that's kind of a... You can't cross the stream. Oh, is there? Is there uh, you can there cross the stream with a forestry plan, sure. You can. Yes, that's what I mean. But you can't, you put can't the pipe just do it. it. Yeah. Uh, so what do we want to do? Send them a letter? Did you ever, speaking of letters, did you get a response from the um, quiz? It? I have not gotten a response from him yet. I'll... Uh, Need this phone number from you because the letter didn't go through. Okay. A very politely worded letter. It was good. Yeah. Please no, I'm saying oh. we should send one to the. Yeah, I mean, just. Okay, just sure. It's come to our attention. You're, you know, you're working on your land and. Yeah. You could please contact the commission with your, you know, intent or whatever. Or whatever way you want to. Doing any work near a wetland yeah. or yeah. putting in pipes. And it's sure. a 200 foot buffer because it's a river. Is it a perennial stream at that stage? Maybe it's just starting out. That's not much of a it's dream. Listed on here is the stream. It's there a solid line. Solid line. There you go. That's what we start our, our purpose on. Okay. Okay, so you're going to be following up with with Farmer Magoon. Manuji and I can. I'll try calling him now. Just. It's been a mother's house since the letter went out. I'll share the contact with you, Isabella. The other encroachment was where we were talking about uh, recommending the split rail pass. Is that now something that land use is looking into? I sent the summary email to Anne and the rep from Metacomet and CC Peter. Uh, so I was hoping to for Anne to. Uh, I haven't been proactive. I was going to wait till the next meeting of the CPA to kind of see what their thoughts are. It's not a real driving issue. It, it needs to be done. So I will, yeah. it's on my to do list. Is that CPA or land use? Or they it's a land. It, no, it's the land use committee. CPA is somebody else. Who's the CPA? That's the money. Who's? Mike. Mike. Mike's on the CPA. 
How come we're not asking you about CPA? <laughs> Ask away. Uh, and then the one kind of takeaway with the public water supply is I think now that we have a town manager or town administrator, there could really be a web page with you know updates could go on that website moving forward. That's what I was going to suggest, kind of posting it for these people to look. You know, yeah, so when of these there's going to be activity. I mean. You know, it's town owned land and stuff like that, but you know, maybe just to be kind of courteous just to put on there, hey, you know, they're going to be doing next. But you know what happens with that is just what he was saying. You have engineering companies, surveying yeah, crews, no, they're, no, they're, they're just going out, they're scheduling going out. That'd be really hard to do, you know, for Dylan, I would think, because she's going to take the fall for it and they're just going to show up whenever they, you know, that's just the nature of the business. No, but for anything like cutting trees, not that, uh, not that, right, yeah. Not that part. I mean, well, even the cleaning trees, there well, doesn't need to be noticed to an abutter. No, it's, it's up to the town to make sure it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's right well, up it's against the property line. It's, it's kind just of courteous. courteous. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, but I mean, she's. I can see she's going to take the brunt of all that. So a website's going to come in really handy. There was a lot of confusion on what was her and what was Jack Hunter with the town planner, and he's only here once a week, and then there was no manager and. I didn't want to stop making excuses for them because that just doesn't go anywhere. You know, it's hard to say, you know, geez, no, they are part time and, you know, people input, don't want to hear that. My input was you go over there and exchange contact information and that's what they did. Yeah, the first, first thing you do is say, oh, well, I'm really busy. Well, that's not going to cut it. You're going to, you're going to start, you know. Uh, so then the, the DEP issued uh, comments on the three Ross and Farm Drive. I briefly mentioned that, but they need stormwater reports for those three. Um, and then there was a submittal from Mass DOT for the Route 16 road work, which was a big one. Uh, they'll be on for next meeting, August 8th. For the whole enchilada? The whole... <laughs> oh, oh my God, we're going to be here. Uh, I shouldn't. Well, I mean, yeah. it's the whole thing. He from... has to recuse himself from commenting on thing DOT's half, 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 half. enough butter and maybe to down. the specific parcel in front of you. But they, you they could they comment they on a recent. What about, yeah, what, about, what about his water that's going down with 16 and hitting these? A conversation is going to be uh, accessible. Cranberries floating everywhere. So they want to. What I'd say is just call the uh, Ethics Commission bottom line. Ellen can give you the phone number. To well, and then I'm going to be in a butter to Route 16 yeah. too, yeah. and they're they're yeah. taking some of our land. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're they're not asking permission for that. This is going to be a common. They'll pay you. In this case, no matter what to do yeah. on Hastings. The second opinion. Yeah. And no, for sure. Conversation with town council. That's necessary. Task force news. That's in uh, post meeting. Um, all right, we'll go back to agenda item 14, commission reorganization. Appointment of our three members. It is time for deciding who our chair, vice chair, and other board liaisons will be for fiscal year 25. So, welcome the floor for nominations for chair. I will open. Can I make a motion? No, you do. You don't make oh. a motion. I'm going to make a nomination. Yeah. You're going to nominate someone? Yeah, Carl. Okay. <laughs> Second, I, I'm willing to run. No, you, you don't need a second. You okay. just, I, There's a nomination. You just have to see if the person's willing to do it. The other nominations for chair. Joe Biden. Oh. Well, we can roll around in a chair, okay. right? Or I get weekend at Bernie's. Yeah. Do, are people comfortable with a voice vote or do you want a secret ballot for this? I think uh, we can do voice vote. Okay. Okay, all in favor. Uh, actually, Susan's on. Okay, so I guess roll call. Roll call. Uh, Susan, who are you casting your vote for? Us? Uh, Carl Hummel or Lenny the above? Um, you kind of broke up a little. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we're 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 having nominations for chair. I've been nominated mm -hmm. and accepted. Do you have any nominations for chair? Um, nope. Um. Good job. Okay so. okay, so now we're having having a roll call vote, uh, either voting for Carl or none of the above. I vote for Carl. Susan. Bob, I vote for Carl. Peter votes for Carl. Leah votes for Carl. 
Carl, do you have any pins we could put on? Yeah. <laughs> Tim, Tim, I. <laughs> My guy. Okay, and I will vote for myself as well, so that makes it unanimous. Uh, Isabella, is there yeah. something that you want to read at this point? I said it all, so I said it all. Okay, I covered it all. All right, we will now have uh, nominations for vice chair. I'll make a nomination yeah. for Susan to continue. Susan, are you willing to continue as vice chair? Yes. Okay. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? To throw in a little competition, but no. Okay. I'm going to nominate <laughs> Leah. Oh, okay. Um, I'm flattered. I would, uh, I would gladly do it if Susan didn't want to do it. <laughs> oh, who wants it more? <laughs> She hasn't said anything in response, so you've been nominated. Do you accept the nomination or decline? I would accept if Susan didn't want to do it. Sorry, I'm going to yes or no. I'm going to you accept I'm, and then they vote. I'm, you either you either decline the nomination or you accept the nomination. You can't. Go. But can I hear what Susan says first? She already accepted. Oh, she did. Okay, yes. then. I don't want to cause a lot of strife here or anything like that. Um, no worries. Well, let's take a vote. Well, I need to find out whether she's okay, accepting. Take a vote. No, take no, no, no. a vote. Are you accepting the yeah, nomination? I will if you would take a vote if Susan's okay with it, because I don't want to. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> okay. All right. So we now have two people who have been nominated and accepted for vice chair. Uh, any further discussion on the merits of the two candidates? Okay, so we'll have a roll call vote. Start with Susan. We have uh, uh, for Susan, for, for Leah, or well, that's not really the thing vote for Leah. <laughs> so you can vote for yourself or something. You can vote else. for yourself for yes. sure. That's okay. That's crazy. Um, since I accepted that, I'll vote for myself. <laughs> I vote for Susan. Okay, I vote for Leia. I vote for Leia. I will do what Susan didn't vote for myself. Okay. Follow suit. I vote for Susan. Score. Cool. It's tie, I think, to you. <laughs> What's the score? Cool? I don't know. One, 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 two. I vote for Susan. Okay, so. One, two, uh, three. Thanks, Peter. Four. It should be four for Susan. Yeah. Yeah. Carl hasn't voted yet. No, I voted for I voted for Leia. That that's what braided a tie getting down to the last person. All right. So we now have Susan, who will be the vice chair for the next year. Uh, our in terms of board liaisons, uh, are any any are the people who are currently board liaisons willing to continue serving in that capacity? Okay. So you would be um, like Nitmuck. For the CPA, yes. CPA and land use. Or no, not CPA. I'm just only land use. He's okay. CPA. I'll continue to CPA. Okay. Unless someone else. Well, that's the I thing. We were. It, it's all meant to be shared. Even like the vice chair and chair. I'm not wanting to share this. Yeah. But <laughs> everything else. You've been vice be, chair before. Yeah, yeah. The spirit is that. You know, okay. Yeah. So we'll we'll continue those positions. Um, I I will. The, 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 I will say a bit more about the, the position that I have on chairs voting. Um, each, uh, uh, under strict Roberts rules, uh, there is no official determination as to whether chairs are voting members of the board or not. However, this is specifically stated in the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, which does say that the board chairs, the commission chairs do have a vote. So what that what that means is it's at the discretion of each individual commission. They can have a policy which allows the board chair to vote, but then states under what circumstances they do it. The one that I have, have adopted is I will vote to break a tie. 
Leah's case, when she was acting chair, she voted to break a tie. However, I do get a vote, which is why after I go through and everybody else votes in favor of it, I say passes unanimously, which is my way of saying that I am voting in favor of it as well. So it's a question of I am voting, but usually I don't have to say anything. I just when I say passes unanimously, that's including my vote as part of uh, everyone else. I affirm that, Carl, to me that the purpose is the chair really shouldn't vote because the chair is usually very important and he should be last and he shouldn't influence the other people's votes. So he yeah. should only vote if necessary, really, and the only, but yeah. yes, you're entitled to a vote. Okay. I can, so did you follow along with what I, I was saying? Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for the vote of confidence. I guess I'm just going to weigh in. Most of the confound meetings I've attended in other towns, the chair does vote. And so for minutes, am I explicitly saying the chair doesn't vote if you're just saying passes unanimously because your name isn't in the roll call? At that point, you can in the minutes say that I, I, I voted as part of unanimous. In cases where people are abstaining, I say passes unanimously with, with, the, with abstentions, or I'll say whatever the appropriate language is. The definition. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Why don't we keep it simple? You're either going to say yes. Okay. Or you're not going to say any. Okay. So I, I will. I, after everybody else goes through, I'll say, Carl Hummel, yes, passes unanimously. So I'll just add that into it. Um, that makes sense. Okay. Well, that's just in there. <laughs> I usually won't. So if keep me honest, if I forget that particular step, the way that abstentions work is, if you abstain, you are stating that your vote is tossed onto whatever the side of the majority is. So if there were four people voting in favor, two against and one abstention, it's considered to be a five to two vote. That abstention isn't a no vote, it's not and it is it's considered to be a yes vote. Or is that considered where, a majority? Where did you find that information? I don't think it's considered a yes unless you need a tie. Oh okay. That's right. I was going to question that. Okay. When well, you abstain, that means you're not voting. OK, but it, 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 so, for the purpose, it, it, you're right. It's not considered a yes vote, but it doesn't count against the majority vote. Correct. Yeah, it's still a majority okay. vote. Yeah. yeah. OK, uh, so are there any other words you need to say after? From your OK, so that covered everything. <laughs> I was supposed to do it, but you did it. OK, well. <laughs> uh, I've been doing it since I was a teenager. Uh, all right. Uh, and, up to agenda item 16, review and approve minutes. July 11th. Read from the script. We can get to it first. <laughs> I got a motion to approve oh, you got it. for July 11th. As I don't even know. By the I second. Yeah, I have reviewed the minutes. Uh, uh, I am not commenting on the section regarding 134 North, but uh, so I, and I have no comments on the other active sections. So anybody else have comments on the minutes? Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion? All right, roll call, Susan. I approve the minutes, July 11th, 2024. You can just say aye. Uh, Peter, I. <laughs> Peter, I. Details, yeah. details. Leah, I. Am I? Okay. okay. Uh, 17. Good and welfare for the commission. Anybody want to sound off? Did that before. Huh? Yeah, that was for the public. No, that was for the public. But we still had our audience. This is if you want to bring up something, say, hey, Isabella, can you take a look at, you know, this meeting's getting really long. Let me add that. It's <laughs> time to go. Oh, I don't know how the planning board gets away with only meeting once. Right. Now, um, one thing we will be discussing at the August 8th meeting is Isabella's upcoming vacation plans and how we will cover things uh, at the end of the second half of August. She's getting another vacation? It's just weird. <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right. how many vacations? You get three weeks? Well, I was part time before. It's yeah. an actual vacation. This is a paid one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My first day to vacation. That's good. Just take them to, uh, Are you taking two weeks? 
at our 10, 10 days, nice. but either during our August yep. 8th meeting, we will have a much better idea of whether we need to have to deal with um, people who want to get things in for fall town meeting. Uh -huh. uh, behind for planning board, so it's not our fault. Yep. All right, uh, any other agenda item 18 items not reasonably anticipated? Um, I just have a, you know, I was thinking about making a motion to uh, go visit Susan's condo for that view over there and maybe uh, enjoy it a little bit oh, after the meeting. That the view out the back window? Yeah. yeah. What, what, <laughs> what's that, the Atlantic Ocean? Where are you, Susan? You know Where are you located? That's a fake background? Yeah. Uh, I thought it was your summer home, sorry. No, I'm, I'm, I haven't left my house in six weeks besides doctor's appointments. Fun that's time. Thanks. That's well, thanks. Get better. All right. So agenda item yeah. 19. Someone going to make a motion. I motion to adjourn. Bob, I heard Bob first. I second. second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Thank you. Charles goes aye and passes again. It's great. See you in a few weeks. Good night, everyone.